Hello, hello. Hey, hey. Hi, Alexander. So nice to say, have you with us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is season two, Wins Around the World, and I'm so proud and honored today to have a good friend with me, Alexander Bienek, Vice President of Marine Operations from Star Clippers. Thank you so much, Alexander, for being with us. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to, to be here and to share whatever you would like to hear from me. I would get a good story from you by the end of, the, of, the, of our discussion, I can tell you that. I mean, uh, okay, uh, let, let's start. I mean, we had a, a very good uh, sea trade global. Uh, we are heading for a good sea trade med, hopefully, with flights uh, fixing themselves. But, uh, you know, and uh, we, we've seen other industry events uh, going on at the same time in person. And we've seen all the cruise ships going back, hopefully going back in July in operation. So this is great news for the industry, isn't it? Yes, it, it's great news. We are lucky enough to have uh, all our ships uh, in operation. Uh, the last one started in April, so, so the full summer season 2022 for us is, is uh, with full fleet. Uh, if you look at other cruise lines, majority are same or close to, to be same. So yes, uh, very different from last year and two years ago, which is a good sign. And let's go, we will keep Let's, let's hope we'll keep this way. Yeah? We will not stop anymore. I, 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 am, I am positive that uh, we will keep going. I mean, even though that the pandemic is, uh, is slightly picking up in some areas, it's nothing major. I know operations will continue and uh, everything will be back at normal. And this is something which, again, I mean, for between 2020 and now, your, uh, your plan, your itinerary plan it was short term. I think now you go, you will slowly go back to long, longer term itinerary planning. Yes, we, we are, I would say, back to normal in, in, in terms of itinerary planning. Of course, uh, whatever we are planning in 2020 was, uh, we, were, we were not sure whether this is going to happen. Normally, the planning process is two years in advance. Uh, the pandemic at the beginning, we thought it would be short, then, then uh, we got scared it's going to be long. Uh, we had to look for some uh, short solutions, but now, now we are whatever we are planning. Uh, it's based on the long term, and uh, well, the, the the regular regular sailing in future. Yes, and that, that's great news. All right, I mean, uh, you have, uh, as I said, magnificent magnificent ships. Uh, as I was saying to you before we start recording, that you already the sustainability factor and carbon footprint for you is is already solved. So I'm very happy for this, with your beautiful wings. I went through your uh, website before and I saw your beautiful cabins and all the nice atmosphere you, you, you give to your passengers and have the feeling of a sailing boat, which is, this is great. Uh, I know your ships at the moment are cruising up and down the, the Med and many of them are in Greece, which we are very happy that you are here and all your passengers have a great time. But uh, I mean, the, the truth is that you're visiting uh, uh, destinations that other companies cannot, the larger cruise ships. You visit the smaller destinations, you visit the more isolated destinations and popular ones. And uh, tell us, what are you looking for when you plan and design an itinerary? Yes, first of all, thank you that uh, you like our ships. Yes, the, the, the product, product is very special. Yes, we do real sailing. It's not a fake uh, sailing ship uh, with, with sails just for show. We do real sailing. We try to, to stop engines as much as possible, maybe except entering or, or, or departing ports. Yes, uh, indeed, uh, we try to look for destinations which are not accessible for large ship. And I think we are pretty successful in this. Uh, sometimes we find that whatever we discover uh, two years later, uh, our competitors, maybe not with sailing ships, but also with small ships, are calling uh, same destinations too. So, so yes, we are all watching each other. Uh, when it comes what we are looking, it, we we could talk here hours and hours, of course. But but I would I would say that from the from a, from, from the perspective of small ships. Uh, with small number of passengers, and uh, I believe uh, passengers with uh, high demand, demanding uh, something, something different, something very special. We are looking at this from uh, from for, we are looking at two aspects. 
yes. One is, of course, priority number one is, is passenger's experience. But uh, you cannot do anything if the call is not feasible for various reasons. It can be a navigational reason, but it can be a reason that maybe the local community is not that happy to have, uh, have uh, tourists coming, passenger ships coming. Maybe they don't understand what, what we may bring to them. So, so these are, these are two, two main aspects uh, what we are looking at. Uh, from, the, from the passenger's perspective, imagine, uh, imagine yourself, uh, you are on a sailing ship, you are arriving to, to island, Greek island, let's say, so many beautiful Greek islands uh, you have. Uh, what what would you like to see? This is the way how we are trying to find something new. What what they want to see? So you may like to see small town with nice tavernas. Yes. You may like to see beach, beautiful beach. Yes, you don't like maybe to see big crowd. Uh, what is important that uh, you find something what is what is real is not fake is is not created for tourism is is something genuine yes and and there are many destinations which which don't they possibly don't know that they can offer this whenever I am attending B two B meetings. Uh, uh, some 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 of these meetings you talk to people who who have who are very well established they they have destinations very well known and it's it's more or less to 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 polish some some uh, details but but sometimes you you find oh by the way but you are representing this big port but you are also representing this small island which is just next to i i don't need to know about this port i know possibly everything about the big port tell me something about about small small destinations and i think this is a chance for 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 uh, for ports destinations representatives to to think what they have around not the main port what they have around mm. this is very very important what you say uh, as many of our viewers would be you know uh, new destinations or destinations that as you say might have a secondary or a third port within uh, their their uh, structure and it's important to understand that the infrastructure that is necessary for ships like yours that they don't necessarily need millions and millions of of, of, of the, euros the, or dollars defi definitely not definitely not when we go for inspection of potential new destination and uh, of course uh, uh, the, the the location is is you know like in real estate the most important things are location location and location yes you will not build the town for us but if there is a nice town what you need to have is a tender pier which is a safe pier for tenders which means with fenders not just a block of concrete so easy to do so easy to help with this if there is a pier if there is a marina if there is a pier marina is busy with yachts but you may have a end of the breakwater what we could use it must be safe for our tender boats yes. then what is what is important for us our our product uh, important part of the product is to offer water sport opportunities which means often we prefer to stay on an anchorage rather than in port. And one may say, oh, you want to save money because getting alongside is more expensive. No, if we stay on an anchorage close to, close to port, we send tenders to the city, but at the same time, we may offer water sports from marina platform of the ship. Yes. So if, if we are forced to be alongside because the local rule is that if the if the berth is available, you are obliged to go alongside. This is not what we are happy about because we want to have our choice. Uh, this has to be considered by local administration. Sometimes, sometimes the tourist office, which is let's say inviting us, they have 
they, they can't do much about this except to discuss to local authorities they that why you are obliging the, the company the, the ship to get alongside if they prefer to stay on the anchorage and offer water sports half of passengers would go to the city half of passengers in the morning would use our marina platform using say, our sailing boat kayaks uh, stand-up paddles and then in the afternoon they would go to have a lunch drinks in the evening in local tavernas uh, so they can use the the everything what is offered by the destinations from the ship side and on ashore that's a, that's a great tip uh, to give and i think you just gave out a good uh, secret out as how to approach you and this is what um, was my next question so let's let's give some practical advice uh, alexander so say i'm a port and i want to see you in situate uh, med in in, uh, in, a, in a couple of months time and I, i'm booking an appointment and i need to prepare my case my 10 or 15 minutes with you, you know, obviously we know time is of essence. What would you expect? What would you would you advise our ports to bring in as information to your send you even better before or after? Uh, what would uh, be the crucial information that will uh, help you make your decision to, 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 to put a, something on the test call, obviously to start with, and then later on on a regular program? Yes. Uh... I, I would expect that, uh, first of all, the destination will be ready really to receive calls of ships like ours. Yes. So, so there is a possibility to bring the ship relatively close. If we are, if we are talking about anchorage position, it cannot be further than, let's say, 1, 1. 1.5 miles from the tender pier. Okay. If we are, if we are offered anchorage position three miles away from shore, it's no go for us. It's too far. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. too uncomfortable for passengers to spend so much time in a tender boat to get to the sea. Next, next, uh, what we would expect uh, to be offered is is the the especially if this is very new destination uh, apart from the tender peer ready infrastructure for us would be a welcome of the local tourism office. Mm -hmm. what, what the local tourism office can offer to our passengers, whether it's a folklore, welcoming folklore, uh, leaflets about uh, potential excursions or, or uh, local community welcoming ships. This is important. Passengers, when they see this, they feel really well seen in the destinations and maybe maybe it will result that next year they will spend holiday in this place it's not only to come by the ship it's not only this way there are many many passengers who are saying wow you showed us such nice places we have to go there also for a for a one week holiday next year for example yes. so so yes we of course need all all information about the potential uh, inward and outward uh, clearance yes whether the international clearance is possible uh, immigration services whether whether this is ISPS support whether the, the, the it's possible to to prepare after the sunset safe access to the tender boat which means proper lighting uh, at the at the tender pier all of all of this which you 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 imagine that it is really necessary to make the call safe not only safe and successful successful from the passengers experience perspective safe because we we need to ensure that passengers they leave the ship and they come back to the ship in a safe way yeah i mean that that that's great uh, i will tell you this uh, alexander the force i work with I am a consulting company that I help destinations and ports, and we discussed this many times. I always like to call it, we look at the science and we look at the art. Science is what you described so far, all the small details. In your case, not so big infrastructure. So I would call it micro infrastructure, and the ports will need to be ready to have a, a, all the information together, send you beforehand, maybe when they see you or when they can give it to you uh, on when they see you and describe the, you know, the small facilities. But the art, the art is the desirability of the destination and how they can increase desirability. But also, as you say, a welcome, the port experience, and the excursions. 
And the force I work with, usually we put together a discussion book uh, to cover what's available on the destination, what's available on the island. In terms of generic information, you have your agents that uh, you always do, you, through them, you may do some excursions, but also what's available within the city limits. Many times, especially in the small destinations, it's very close. Uh, museums or bars or tavernas or some, some other forms of history and culture and gastronomy, which is very unique. And I know that, uh, as you say, it's very, very important. And uh, we know that uh, statistics say that more than half of the passengers, when they have a real good time in the destination, they might go back as, as a tourist. And this is the real value. I'm many, not global, many global destinations uh, have become global destinations because of, the, of cruising. And this is the, the reality. Sandorini and Mykonos is two examples we have in Greece. Well, I would say that there are many destinations around the world which become a tourist destination because of Star Clippers calls 25 years ago. <laughs> Believe me, there are there are many of them. <laughs> yes, but you 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 mentioned interesting thing about the uh, just a little infrastructure which is required. You know. Uh, again, coming back to the tender pier because tendering is 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 so 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 obvious operation for us. Uh, if you imagine that the, the, we are we are operating normally during summer seasons in in the Met, Caribbean's winter, hot weather there. Yes, uh, it's it's so little to prepare like like a tent to shelter when passengers are waiting maybe 20 minutes for uh, for for, the, for their tender. Normally, our service is every 30 minutes at the beginning continuous service then every 30 minutes. Uh, it's not nice to wait 15 minutes fully exposed to, to, to sun uh, when it's 10, 35 degrees. So how easy it is to, to have a tent uh, prepared. It's, uh, it's, it's just little help for us and for passengers to have a to have a good memory from, from the first. Uh, I think it's very easy. And uh, let me add to that. I always say have a nice map on a hard format and also via QR on the web, on the, on the mobile as well. So while they wait, uh, they can go into the map and they can see some, some data, some uh, information about the local products or the local des delicacies or some, some parts of the history, which you know maybe they know, maybe they don't know, and this will help them on the decision making on where to go and what to shop. Yes, yes, and and you know excursions or uh, organized excursions or exploring the place by passengers. Uh, it, it it's very helpful if we have plenty information up front and when we have printed information on board before the call because because. If passenger embarks the ship on Saturday and is in this place on Wednesday, on Thursday, and we have uh, in the, at the cruise director desk information about next destinations, they are getting ready, they are getting prepared, they know what they want to see. We are able to to tell them what what they can see, and you know they are they are interested. They want to they want to explore. They want to know the history. These people are demanding. Uh, but uh, they want to come back from the holiday with extra knowledge. So for the ports and destinations who listen to us at the moment, get your information right and give the get to Alexander. That's the, that's the idea. Uh, okay, uh, I will not let you go without telling us a, a story from a destination, a place you visited, something which you thought it was very nice, uh, which, you know, it's a best practice, Alexander. Something? Well, a uh, couple of years ago, be before pandemic, I think it was 2017 or, or 18, I flew to Greece. I rented a speedboat uh, and together with my local uh, travel agent, we spent uh, three days uh, and nights, nights not together, but days together on a, on a speedboat. <laughs> uh, sailing from island to island. I, I think as far as I remember, we visited uh, uh, more or less 15 different potential new destinations. But 
new destinations does not mean that 15 cities, uh, 15 big uh, locations. No, we were going from point A to B, and in the middle I see, oh, there is a nice bay. Let's go there. What, what, what? Let's see what's in the bay. And and this is the way how we how how I was looking for a new destination. And I have to say that after spending three days on the noisy speedboat, uh, visiting so many places, we added one one destinations to our our itinerary. I don't want to say which one, but we okay. still keep we still keep this keep this destination. And and I think it was worth it was worth because it was one, something new. For our guests, uh, with with the history, uh, something what uh, was very obvious for Greeks to go to see, they know this place very well. But it was something very new for us and and for for our guests. And and uh, I was thinking, why nobody told me about this place before? Why I had to find this by myself? <laughs> so the the idea is, uh, guys out there, and you know, port destinations. You know, think about this, and uh, Alexander will be in C Trade. Uh, look for him, book your appointments, uh, present your destinations, present your ports, and maybe you, we will see a beautiful Stark, uh, Stark Leaper ship uh, in, the, in the future in your port. Alexander, thank you so much for being with us today. I enjoyed very much our My discussion, pleasure. and I'm looking forward to see you in September in Malaga. Thank you very much, Yanis. I have a real pleasure. To be here with you. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope to see everybody in Malaga without uh, problems uh, with their flight. Uh, well, I hope also our passengers will not have problems with their flights to reach our ships. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, guys. See you soon in episode two of season two.